B2D Advanced Hawkeye, it's, it's often uh, labeled as the quarterback in the sky, and that's probably the phrase that best describes uh, its mission and, and role. We are the first to launch, the last to recover, the aircraft that made sure that we have the eyes and ears and the uh, uh, command and control in the sky to direct the rest of the air wing and to support the strike group in their mission. The ETD is a game changer in comparison to the E2C. We bring a more advanced communication suite, glass cockpit, more advanced weapon systems. So we can handle the traditional role of the E2, but we can also do uh, improved command and control and other missions with the strike group and with combined operations. So the E2D is integral to the, to the Warfare Commander's ability to make decisions. It helps build situational awareness for everyone involved. It helps to correlate everything that everyone's seeing so that everybody can be on the same page. We transmit that information via data links to other aircraft and to ships and part of the strike group to make sure that they have a broader picture of what's around the strike group. We should be excited about the E2D is because it, it is that two-generation leap in, uh, in technology. There's a number of advanced sensors that, that really just synthesize the information that we need to execute the advanced kill chain. One of the key components to being a successful command and control platform is persistence, or the ability to stay on station for longer periods of time. So aero refueling will enable the aircraft to fly a lot longer without the need to land on a carrier or, or a shore to, to fuel. But it, essentially it enables the aircraft to stay on its mission longer. The advanced Hawkeye will no longer be constrained by the inability to receive fuel airborne and thus can go deep over land for an extended period of time. This will truly change pretty much every part of our community and how we approach the employment of the E2D Advanced Hawkeye. It does bring new challenges because we're having to learn new ways of maintaining it. Some of the functions that would be at a depot we've given to our operational sailors. Uh, that allows us to have also a better supportability and reliability of the system as it goes forward. I would advise any maintainer that comes to this platform that it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep them on their toes. They're going to see some unique things about it, but they're ultimately going to feel very fulfilled working on this aircraft. The aircraft is designed to be able to implement changing upgrades and changing technologies, and that's in response to the changing nature of, of threats as well. As threats evolve, so do we. It goes up with a mission in mind, but it can reconfigure itself without having to come back and land and can go from you know, air-to-air -air engagements to land forces, search and rescue operations. It's pretty cool. It goes up with one mission, can come back finishing another. Not only is it a technological step forward, but it's also going to be giving us an opportunity to expand into the future. The E2D is a very capable platform, but what makes it the most capable is its operators. Folks have recognized that leaning on our expertise and our, our knowledge set has been very helpful with seeing the big picture. It's caused the, uh, the air crew to think differently is uh, how we view airborne command and control. Uh, and with that, uh, that additional capability, it's also uh, given the uh, air crew a lot of extra additional responsibility delegated from our warfare commanders to uh, execute commanders in fact. Without the E2D, I, th I think we're, we're missing a pivotal link. You want that one person as you're playing game to be able to have that big picture, and that's what the E2D provides. I think in the future, we're looking to do great things with some of the new platforms that are coming to this community and to the Navy as a whole. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the E2D can provide to the fleet. We need the E2D. Uh, we need the E2D to be out there, and it's exciting to see uh, all the great things that the community is doing. It's exciting to see the innovation, and it's exciting to be a part of it. I believe that uh, the E2D will have at least a 50-year shelf life, if not longer. The technology that is coming to the platform is absolutely mind-blowing, and I have no doubt whatsoever that uh, E2D is here to stay.